As the princes of the church, only cardinals have the exclusive responsibility to choose a successor to the Pope. As soon as the sede vacante begins, Cardinal Dean Angelo Sodano will officially call all able-bodied cardinals to Rome, but only the ones under 80 can take part in the election. It's a very small group composed of guys who know one another fairly well for the most part. So it's much more analogous to, say, the election of a department chair in a university. The start of the conclave has to be delayed 15 days to give all cardinals time to get to Rome, but start no later than 20 days after the beginning of the Sede Vacante. The Sistine Chapel, where the conclave has to take place, must be sealed off, and the insides checked for any hidden recording devices. For the entire conclave, the cardinals are required to stay at the Vatican's Domus Sanctae Marte. They have very good service. It's not a five-star hotel, but it's very comfortable. Cardinals are not allowed to communicate with the outside world or have access to the media. They could be excommunicated if they do. The conclave starts with a pro eligendo papa mass, asking for God's help in electing the new pope. From there, they'll head to the Sistine Chapel and take an individual oath of secrecy and to not help any outsiders trying to intervene in the conclave. Then they start voting. In many ways, the voting is the most complicated and time-consuming element of this process. In order for a cardinal to become pope, he's required to get two-thirds of the votes. On the first day, they'll vote only once, but after that, twice in the morning and twice in the afternoon. There will be a pause for prayer and discussion each time after 13 ballots if no cardinal gets the two-thirds majority. To find out how they vote, Mexico's Cardinal Barragan shares his experience from 2005. On the line of each ballot, we must write the name of the cardinal we choose, but in capital letters and in a way that no one can tell who's voting. Each papal elector then walks up the altar of the Sistine Chapel, folds his ballot twice and places it in this plate. After affirming it's his, he drops it into a receptacle. Three cardinals whose name were chosen at random will tally the votes individually. El primer cardenal, eh, que se encontraba al the first cardinal on the far left will silently read the ballot. He passes it to the second who reads it silently. He passes it to the third who reads it out loud. Se lo pasaba al tercero, que lo veía y lo pronunciaba. The ballots will be strung together using a needle to avoid double counts. Three other cardinals will double check the tallies to ensure the counts are correct. And after that, all cardinals will turn in their notes, which will be burned along with the final ballot tallies. Cuando se quemaba incienso, when you burn incense, it produces white smoke, and you can call that the fumata bianca. When you burn the ballots where the candidate's name was written, then that smoke will usually be black. Once a candidate has crossed that two-thirds majority, uh, the dean of the College of Cardinals, or, of course, what happened last time was the dean of the College of Cardinals got elected, so it would be the vice dean, uh, would come to him and say, do you accept your canonically valid election as the successor of St. Peter? And once he says in Italian, accetto, meaning I accept, then from that moment, he becomes the pope. The cardinal dean or highest ranking cardinal bishop will also ask the newly elected pope and therefore bishop of Rome what name he would like to take on. The new pope will change into one of three best fitting white tunics already prepared for his election. After greeting his peers, he then prepares for the apostolic blessing Urbi et Orbi at St. Peter's Square, marking the end of the conclave.